Hallo liebe Freunde, heute bin ich in Berlin für euch und darf mir vorab den neuen Titel von Bethesda ansehen, nämlich Redfall, das äh, Vampir-Shooter-Abenteuer, das in Kürze erscheinen wird. Und ich würde sagen, wir schauen gleich mal rein. Ich bin hier anscheinend wohl schon richtig. Woo! Nice to meet you. Can you introduce yourself a little bit for our audience shortly? Yeah, I'm Harvey Smith, uh, studio director at uh, Arcane Austin, um, and I am currently representing uh, Redfall here as co-creative director along with Ricardo Bear. Uh, very proud to represent our team today. Uh, probably best known as lead designer of Deus Ex and co-creative director along with Rafael Colantonio of Dishonored One and then also director of Dishonored 2. Those are the, the things I've done most recently uh, before Redfall. Mm -hmm. uh, you already said that you have a very long biography uh, concerning uh, the games and the, in the gaming industry. Um, what are your learnings um, for Redfall from the past games you made? Yeah, I mean, someone asked me that uh, a couple of days ago. Does this represent the sum of everything you've learned? And it's like... Uh, I, I don't know if that's true, but like certainly I now feel like I walk around with a lot of institutional knowledge like that uh, is shared with people at Arcane. I learn from them, they learn from me, but, but it's because we all focus on a particular kind of game. Uh, really my interest lies in immersive first person games, games that are a hybrid of first person shooter and RPG, games that have a lot of environmental storytelling, um, they have some resource management, economics, um, and then the game mechanics can be combined in creative ways. Uh, those are the kinds of games I love. They're very atmospheric. So in a sense, Redfall definitely represents uh, us doing what we love, you know. I played it just over an hour upstairs and uh, I can confirm that. So um, what are you, uh, what, what are, you started the project um, before the pandemic and um, what, what do you take with you um, concerning development and game design and overall during this time? Yeah, wow. Uh, this has been a long project because we underestimated how big open world games mm. are and we underestimated how hard it would be to make a co-op game uh, while holding on to the single player as much as we love it. You know, we, we wanted to make sure single player is absolutely good. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was just a lot. And uh, we don't have the biggest team. We have a relatively small team. But we also don't want to crunch our team or burn our team out. Uh, so we've extended the date of the project a few times to compensate. <clears throat> And a lot happened along the way. Uh, multiple ice storms that give us no power for days. We had to boil our water. Uh, we had Trump and the insurrection. Uh, lots of social upheaval, some of it very important, some of it scary. Um, and then, of course, we had the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know? And now it seems okay, we're all vaccinated, and we know it's, it's, it's under control, more or less, I think. Uh, I mean, it, it still hurts older people or immune-compromised people, so everybody should be vaccinated, I guess. But, but the, For a while, we didn't know that it was okay. It was very scary for a while, right? And everybody was dealing with so much anxiety. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the thing I'm proudest of for my team and my leads at Arcane Austin is that we treated everybody very kindly during that period. Uh, during the worst part of the pandemic, we just gave everybody Fridays off because everybody was just dealing with so much extra childcare mm -hmm. or stress. Um, Uh, the company above us was very kind and very good during this. They periodically would just give us more money, like here's $500 for office uh, setup because at your house, mm -hmm. maybe your office, you don't have the right chair or whatever, you know. Um, and so along the way, uh, everybody was just very supportive. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very glad that we were like that. Uh, when we needed more time, the company gave us more time. 
Um, and you know, the the great resignation happened where literally we were hiring people from a game developer that I know, uh, I have friends there, and we were losing people to them at the same time. And it's like these people were just changing chairs, right? Um, and so it was a crazy time. And work from home is, is like a huge revolution. I feel like workers have won some rights there. Like some days I get to not fight traffic. Uh, it's very unpleasant in the United States to drive to work every morning and drive home. And it feels like you're taking your life into your own hands. Uh, but instead, some days you want to lay on the couch with the dog and, and work uh, in your pajamas. Yeah. And uh, it seems pretty awesome. Uh, the people on our team who have kids have said, I spend way more hours a day with my kids now, you know. Uh, and then, of course, there are other people on our team that are like, I have to get away from my family. I have to come <laughs> yeah, to the yeah. office. Uh, so, so much happened along the way uh, that it's just crazy. And uh, the result is, you know, you can play the game single player and it feels like an arcane game. It feels like all our games. Uh, and if you add one player, it still kind of feels like mm -hmm. that. But you add two, you add three, it feels like something completely different. It's wild, it's chaotic, it's a party. <laughs> and so in my dream world, everybody would play through once alone, and then they would invite a friend and play you know, with more people because mm -hmm. play a different character or something. Uh, we have four characters, right? So, um, But yeah, it's, it's been wild times. This uh, Didn't expect this project to be this long. Okay. Um, speaking of uh, Redfall, um, it's, I feel it's kind of like a mix between um, the horror genre and the fun shooter. Is there? Do you want to um, position yourself with the game in any corner, or do you want to mix it? That's a good, good clarification. We did not set out to make a horror game per se, right? Like um, working inside the company, I have had the pleasure of talking every now and then to Shinji Mikami. You mm -hmm. know, uh, he's an amazing guy. Um, and those that team makes uh, incredibly scary, uh, horrifying content sometimes, horrifying games in, a, in the best possible way, right? Uh, although recently they made Hi-Fi Rush, which is like colorful and fun, and it's like, where did that come from? Uh, but anyway, we did not set out to do that. That's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to make a spooky action game. It's thrilling the way a roller coaster is thrilling or Halloween's thrilling. You know, you're not really scared. Uh, well, you're scared, but you're not really horrified. Uh, and so, that said, there are moments in our games with a lot of blood and something scary happening. You turn on a flashlight and you go into an old house and you go into a basement and something's trying to kill you. There are moments that are feel like horror moments. Mm -hmm. It's just generally, it's a, it's more of a spooky action game. Uh, okay, and um, I just uh, have seen a few pics of the skill set. Can you do it on your own? And you recommend it, you, as you said, first play it on your own and then with your friends? Well, all of every character has a big skill tree and of course there's a lot of passive skills. Uh, and everybody has three active skills. Everybody has two active skills that recharge. Like, just to use Layla as an example, she has uh, Umbrella and Lift, and those come back very, pretty rapidly. But they can be upgraded in different ways. You can change the functionality of them. And then further, we have uh, she. Ha every character has a, a third active skill that consumes psychic residue. So you look for psychic residue by killing vampires or doing other things in the world. Um, and when you have enough psychic residue, you can use your third, your ult. And in Layla's case, she summons a vampire that is loyal to her and, and fights for her. Uh, vampire ex-boyfriend. Sort of her himbo boyfriend, uh, uh, ex-boyfriend Jake Jason, shows up. God, I just bumped him down with that. Uh, uh, yeah, so her himbo uh, ex-boyfriend Jason shows up. And uh, is like, hey, Layla, what's up? And starts fighting uh, for her and then teleports away. And so uh, some of them are really fun. Some of them are a little more grim. Uh, but uh, yeah. And then, and then we also have remnants mm -hmm. that you can find in the game that modify things. Like uh, you, remnants that bump, bump up your health and add traits. Um, <clears throat> and we have additional plans down the road to add further modifiers to the way powers work. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there's a there's a big tree and it's fun to explore and you can't do it all in one playthrough. 
Uh, you can't hit the level cap in one playthrough. Okay. Yeah. And um, speaking of the open world and Redfall, it's a fictional city mm -hmm. in New England. Um, I think you picked it for a specific reason that it's in New England. And uh, can you tell anything about uh, any connections to Salem or can people expect something from the real world? Well, you know, we're here in Berlin and Europe has got an, a long history, right? I lived in Lyon, France for four years and I lived in uh, Germany for three years, decades ago. I lived in a little village called Quadersbach near Landstuhl. <laughs> And uh, I very rarely ever meet anybody who's heard of Quadersbach. Uh It had a graveyard and a cheese shop and, a, and uh, you know, a farm and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but it was lovely and I, I really had a great time here. But in the United States, history is shorter, right? The, the country's only 200 and something years old. So lots of areas feel new or newish or they feel uh, like we tear things down and rebuild them so often that there's not that much of a sense of history. New England is special in that it has, it's one of the earliest places that people lived in the mm. United States. It has a haunted feel as a mm. result. So much has happened there, you know, and the Salem witch trials were there and that sort of thing. So, uh, or in the area, right? Mm. So it has a uh, kind of a reputation. And if you look at books like Salem's Lot, uh, you know, they're, uh, there's a history of that that kind of uh, macabre fiction. All right. Um, so you can play it on your own. You can play it in co-op. Uh, it's an open world game and it comes out May 2nd, right? On Game Pass for PC and Xbox. It's just great that people have now played the game. Yeah. So, you know, instead of us trying to describe the game, uh, now you can try to describe the game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you very much for your time and... Uh, I enjoyed playing the last hour and I hope to play it real soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ich bin zurück aus Berlin und kann euch nun ein bisschen was über die 90 Minuten Spielzeit erzählen, die ich dort äh, in Redfall verbringen durfte. Wir durften aus vier Charakteren wählen, die in verschiedenen Skillsets und ähm, schon vorgefertigten Waffen äh, mit dabei hatten. Und wir durften ein bisschen weiter in der Storyline einsteigen, hatten somit schon ein paar Fähigkeitenpunkte und Waffen verfügbar. Äh, die Vampire, die ihr dort bekämpft, äh, könnt ihr nur mit Pflöcken töten. Das heißt, man muss auf jeden Fall äh, mit Melee-Attacken arbeiten. Oder man hat, wie zum Beispiel ich, äh, meine Lieblingsgun, die ich dort entdeckt habe, die sogenannte Schwarzlichtkanone, mit der ihr die Vampire grillen könnt. Die funktionieren aber nicht auf der anderen Fraktion, die dabei ist, das sind nämlich die Kultisten und äh, die können einfach umgeballert werden, was das Zeug hält. Äh, die Waffen könnt ihr morden, es darf gelootet werden und mittels Safe House auf der Karte könnt ihr schnell reisen, was bei der Größe der Map sicher ein, Fa ein wichtiger Faktor sein wird. Redfall sieht fantastisch aus, von der Story habe ich einen Ausschnitt gesehen und finde es schon relativ interessant, wir dürften in den Menschen eindringen und haben ein bisschen die Hintergrundgeschichte zu Redfall selbst äh, erforscht, aber es bleibt natürlich euch überlassen, wie ihr in Redfall spielen wollt, wie ihr erkunden wollt, ihr könnt äh, Main Quests, Name Quests annehmen, ihr müsst nicht die Storyline verfolgen, natürlich wird es äh, empfohlen. Und äh, vor allem im Koop stelle ich mir Redfall sehr lustig vor, da die verschiedenen Skills gut zum Einsatz kommen und kombiniert werden können und auch sehr viel Spaß machen. Äh, neben den Vampiren gibt es auch Nester, die wir ausräuchern durften. Äh, wir mussten Vampirgötter besänftigen und äh, die letzten übrigen Menschen in Redfall retten, um mit ihnen zu interagieren, um die Story über Dialoge zu erfahren. Und äh, ich bin schon recht gespannt was der offizielle Release dann noch zu bieten hat in Sachen Redfall. Ähm, danke nochmal an Bethesda für die Einladung nach Berlin, es wäre sehr cool, ich freue mich extrem auf das Game. Äh, Redfall 2. Mai exklusiv für Xbox und PC und natürlich Day One im Game Pass. Also vielen Dank fürs Reinschauen und bis bald.